I'm Claudia Catania, and you're listening to Playing On Air. You are about to hear Misadventure by Donald Margulies, a Pulitzer Prize winner for his play Dinner with Friends and finalist for his plays Sight Unseen and Collected Stories. Donald Margulies' cast today includes Zoe Kazan, who has played on Broadway and off in The Seagull, A Behanding in Spokane, and Angels in America, among others. She's also a playwright, and films include Happy Thank You More Please, Meek's Cut Off, as well as Ruby Sparks. Miss Adventure also features Timothée Chalamet, whose films include Interstellar, Love the Coopers, and Hot Summer Nights. He won acclaim on Broadway in John Patrick Shanley's Prodigal Son. And now, Misadventure. We are in the parking lot of the Danville, New Hampshire police station. We see Ansley, 21, and Ethan, 17. It's cold. Get in the car. Uh Uh-uh. Get in the car. No way. Ethan, get in the car. I refuse to get in the car when you're like this. Like what? You're mad at me. I'm not mad at you. Yes, you are. I could tell your nostrils are doing that thing. What thing? You know, they kind of... Get in the car! I'm not getting in any car with you at the wheel when you're like this. What if you lose control and crash into a tree or something? I'm not going to lose control. Oh, yeah? How do you know? You might get this uncontrollable urge to smack me repeatedly, and then what? I'm not going to smack you. Get in the car. I have had enough trauma for one evening. Thank you. You've had enough trauma. Yes, the stigma of incarceration will haunt me for years. Get in the car. Ethan, I am too tired and too pissed off to Uh be having this argument with you in a police station parking lot in nowhere, New Hampshire, in the middle of a freezing night. I'm cold, and I want to go home. I like the cold. Cold feels good. It's sobering me up. I feel more awake than I've ever felt in my life. What were you thinking? What in the world were you thinking? I don't know. You don't know? Were you trying to kill yourself, huh? Were you? Were you looking to get yourself killed? No, I don't know. Maybe. Maybe? Maybe. I don't know, I said. You selfish boy. You stupid selfish boy. Good, let it out. I'm glad we're talking now. It's much better than that nostril thing. How dare you be reckless with your life? How dare you? Shh. You're disturbing the peace. You want them to throw both of us in jail? What's my life worth if you trash yours? Huh? Have you thought about that? I'll have to live the next 75 years haunted every day by your pimply, ghostly self. We're not just sibs, you stupid moron. We're soulmates. Don't you know that by now? I'm sorry. You drink yourself sick and go hitching on the interstate? Are you crazy? Have I taught you nothing? Hey, hey, I said I was sorry. Never mind being drunk and weaving on the shoulder with cars and trucks whizzing by at 80 miles an hour. Never mind that. What if a crazy person stopped to pick you up? A Jeffrey Dahmer type or something? (laughs) What? And took you away so you were never heard from again. Some Boy Scouts would come across your jawbone one day in the woods. (laughs) It's a good thing the cops picked you up and threw you in jail. You could have been roadkill. Oh, you are nuts. You know that? You have been watching too much television. Don't mock me. There are crazy people out there. You know, they're not just created by the media. They exist. There are truly bad and sick people out there in the world who want nothing more than to destroy other people's happiness. (laughs) Stop laughing! Stop it! It isn't funny! You scared me, Ethan! You scared me to death! Ow! 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 It hurt. Good. I can explain. Nothing you could possibly say. Aren't you even going to give me my due process? Aren't you? (sighs) I don't see why I should. I'm just a kid, you know? Oh, God. Is that your excuse? Is that your pissy excuse? Kids are supposed to act out and do reckless things, right? If not while I'm young, when? When I'm old? When I'm 40? The key is surviving long enough to attain wisdom. Okay. So I survived. You're not a cat, though, Ethan. That's what worries me. You only get one shot, and you came awfully close this time. Okay, so let's chalk it up to the folly of youth, okay? I've learned my lesson. I drank a whole lot of really bad bourbon with some moron I don't even like, whose approval I inexplicably crave, 
and blew Pizza Hut pizza all down my front and onto my brand new running shoes. Don't you think I'm humiliated enough? I just bought these shoes like a week ago. If you'd killed yourself, if you'd gotten yourself killed for some stupid peer pressure, macho, adolescent, alcoholic misadventure, if I'd lost you because of it, if I'd lost you, Pizza Hut, huh? No wonder you smell like a dairy farmer. I can't even smell it anymore. Trust me. Oh, yeah? Why should I trust you? Because you better. Because if you don't trust me, brother, you are a goner. You are toast. Now get in the car. Still mad at me? Get in the freaking car. Can we stop somewhere to get something to eat? I'm starving. We'll see. <laughs> you stink. You just heard Misadventure, written and directed by Donald Margulies. It featured Timothée Chalamet as Ethan and Zoe Kazan as Ansley. Hello, Donald, Zoe, and Timothée. Zoe, you were once a student of Donald Margulies at Yale. What do you remember learning from him that stayed with you? Oh, my God, you're going to make me cry. I have to say, you know, there are there are things about my college experience that are not crystal clear for me. In fact, there are so many books that I own that have underlines in them that I don't remember reading that I sometimes wonder what my parents were paying for. Um, however, Donald's class is crystal clear for me. I think I remember individual classes and lesson plans, assignments, what we read, things I wrote, things he said. Um, I think a tremendous amount of the foundation that I received as a writer came from um, Donald's class. And also the way that he created a high standard to which I could aspire, but also which I could incorporate into my life going forward. You know, writing is a very lonely thing and the critic can be very loud so having a kind of standard that is not punitive but that is very high was something that has continued to serve me very well it's moving to me to hear you speak that way donald margulies yes okay <laughs> you know after i chose your short i i discovered it was part of a full-length mm -hmm. play called backstory Written right. in 19 scenes by 18 playwrights, and that all the scenes are about Ansley and Ethan's relationship. Mm -hmm. And I I wonder how that came to be and how it worked out. It was a commission from Actors Theatre of Louisville hmm. where they had commissioned 18 writers to, uh, to collaborate, essentially, on a play. And I thought, what an interesting opportunity this is. And the playwright Joan Ackerman was asked to... Um, to create a scenario, which was then sent out to the 18 of us. And we each consulted with one another and chose different moments in this prose piece that Joan Ackerman had basically provided us with. And I, um, I don't remember the, how specific it got, but, but there was something particularly um, uh, salient about the relationship between the orphaned siblings that uh, that I felt that I could do something with, you know, to create a high high stakes situation in which Ethan does something, you know, perfectly age appropriate but incredibly reckless and and, uh, and you know, as a writer, it's it's very um, it's very exciting to be given an assignment of that is so specific like this that it needed to be brief. And we knew that we were writing for younger people, um, and also. 
I love the short form, but there are so few venues for the short form. I think that, you know, Zoe, who is a, a fine writer, um, is part of a, I think, a very uh, fertile generation of playwrights. Do you have, like, a favorite or favorites of your own plays? It's usually the ones that are that are least seen. Brooklyn Boy is one of them. And um, The Model Apartment, you know, people tell me, oh, I love Brooklyn Boy, but it's got seven actors, and you can't double. And... Um, and that's too bad. You know, so yes, when I, when I see something like the front page and there's this multitude of humanity on stage at the curtain call, it's thrilling and I'm jealous. You know, because, you know, my generation, we were scolded for our larger than six or seven cast members. It's been a great pleasure having you all here to talk. Thank you so much. Playwright. Donald Margulies, Zoe Kazan, and Timothy Chalamet. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. You've been listening to Playing on Air, great American short plays with great American actors. Theme and play music by Tom Cochan. Recording and sound design by John Kilgore. Associate producer, Sasha Spitzer. Literary and development associate, Lucy Fleming. Social Media and Outreach, Bonnie Antosh. Distributed by PRX, Public Radio Exchange. We invite you to visit our website at playingonair.org where you can stream short plays and find information about our artists and plays. Join us on Facebook or Twitter and subscribe to our podcast on iTunes. While you're there, leave us a review. We value your opinion. For Playing On Air, I'm your host, Claudia Catania. Thanks for listening.